I'm Professor Nero Mehta from LG Institute of Technology and Engineering. In today's session, we're going to discuss about subject called automobile sales system design. In this particular subject, we are arrived at the topic called suspension design. In that particular suspension design, now we're going to look at lip spring suspension. So first of all, what is lip spring? Lip spring is a type of a shock absorber which provides not only an absorbing effect, shock absorbing effect, but as well it is provide it provides support to our vehicle. I hope you understand this support to our vehicle. So here in this case, here while designing this lip spring, we'll have different consideration for that support as well as to that shock absorbing capacity. Now it compared to coil spring suspension system, lip spring suspension system is a more of a you can say integrated part of a vehicle body. This lip spring is used when our vehicle has higher amount of load carrying capacity. So while designing this lip spring, we are not only considering that vibrating or shock absorbing effect but as well as we will consider it as a beam. Here, there are two types of beam we will going to consider for the lip spring. One is a beam which is called cantilever beam and then a simply supported beam. So before getting into this design and consideration, let's talk about working construction and different principle where we, on which our lip spring is to be designed. I hope you got this lip spring diagram clear. Here our lip spring diagram. This is the lip spring, which is combination. So lip spring is a basic, basically a combination of flat strip joined together in elliptical shape. Joined together in elliptical shape, shape, which has a gradual, gradual different length of different strips. So, and it is commonly used in heavy vehicle or a heavy automobile vehicle where load carrying capacity is higher. These lips are given that camber clear, which is also called elliptical eccentricity to have that a strain under the constant load. So this elliptical spring will provide counterbalancing or counter stress to have to carry those loads which is transported through our axle. These leaves are held together with that axle by U-bolt and this U-bolt under area or length under the U-bolt is called as ineffective length because that length will not going to go under any kind of deflection or a stress when it comes to lip spring. So once again, lip spring are a flat strips held together in elliptical shape to provide that springing effect. The first spring in this lip spring or first strip in this lip spring is very much essential compared to those gradual lips because it carries maximum or it comes under maximum stress compared to other gradual lips. So that lips is called master lip. In practical purpose or in reality, there are two number of master lips one lip is used to have that hinge joint or a hinge with our vehicle body and on another lip is mainly to take that stress or a bending stress. After those lips are called gradual lips. These gradual lips will come under different stresses compared to or depending on that length. But these are not essential quality of our lip spring because the stress should be equally distributed in our lip. So to make that we have to provide some adjustment to our master lips as well as our gradual lip. Here in this construction, here is a construction of our lip spring where you can see there are two master lips and then gradual lips are there. Gradual lip, particular diagram, you can see that there are multiple length of our lip spring depends on this distribution of stress 
So first two leaves are called master leaves and then all the leaves are called gradual leaves. This master leaf and gradual leaves are hold together by eucalypts and where from where our load is acting towards our needs. This distribution of stress will be different for a different length of leaves. But to provide that equal, equal distribution of stress or the equal distribution of that springing effect, we have this rebound clip. This rebound clip hold together are all the leaves to have that motion or the springing effect to transfer to each and every plates. I hope you got this point clear. Here you can see load is acting through from the downward of our leaf and distributed on each and every lips. Clear? Here in gradual lips, there is a provision of end for thin end or you, or you can say they are chiseled out. The end of those gradual lips are thinned to avoid the interference between two subsequent lips. So to have that, to avoid that interference, we are providing that thin section to our end at the end of our gradual lips. So they can have uh, free movement while they are under any kind of stress. So the length, total length here we are considering is a 2L1 and the length under which our U bolt is joined is small L. This length under U bolt are called is called ineffective length. So to find that effective length while deriving the equation for our uh, lip spring, we have to subtract that particular uh, length of U bolt from overall length of our lip spring. I hope you got my point. So the next point, let's assume the distribution of stress in our lip spring. So the lowest lip which has the smallest length will comes under minimum amount of stress and the highest leaf which is also called master uh, leaf comes under maximum amount of bending stress. To avoid this we will provide different provision because in our design or in our consideration while calculating stress it should have always equal, dis equal distribution. Clear? Second thing, first two lips or this lip spring also comes under some point of time a lateral stress. How this lip comes under lateral stress? When your vehicle is going at higher moment of inertia or you can say only inertia and if it is trying to have any lateral movement or if it or in uh, st uh, strictly I am calling it if it is taking any kind of a turn or if, if it is changing any direction then this lip frame com comes under lateral stress. So null to nullify that lateral stress, we will we have to provide two master lips. Clear? In some cases or in 99% of cases, there are always going to be a two number of master lips compared to those gradual lips. I hope you got this point, why we are using two master lips to avoid that lateral stress. Now let's talk about the equal distribution of this stress. To have that equal distribution of stress, we will provide positive stress to upper lips or you can say more, you can say a master lip. So we will provide positive stress to the master lip as well as the thickness of two of those lips or a master lip should be lesser compared to gradual lips. So this is how we cover up this different type of stresses. I hope you got this construction and working of this lip spring. Next, let's talk about nipping of this lip spring. What is this nipping? So, what is this nipping effect? Nipping is nothing but a, a, or area or you can say gap created between two consecutive leaves that is called nipping. If I am, if I am constructing this lip spring, for a same amount of elliptical curvature for each and every leaf, then you will have or we will have a gap between each and every leaves. And due to this gap, the equal distribution of stress will not going to take place. So to have this equal distribution of stress, 
it shouldn't be having any type of nipping between two lips clear so to avoid this nipping we are providing two different provision or two solutions first solution upper lips should be gradually thinner compared to lower lips clear or you can say master lip compact comparatively thinner with gradual lips second provision is to provide positive stress or your initial stress to upper lips so that after coming under that stress it will comes under stress relieving position i hope you got this point here you can see this dotted line which is the initial position of our lip and which have this master lip which have more stress placed even at free condition compared to gradual lip to compensate that excessive amount of stress which is provided through our axle so that it can have positive stress after which is comes under any kind of stress so that negative stress and positive stress will will make our lip spring to have that equal distribution of stress throughout our suspension i hope you got this two point clear this two point will contain seven marks in our gtu examination so from gtu point of view this is most important one of the most important theory clear i hope you understand each and every point very well if you are having any doubt regarding to this lip spring you can directly contact me or uh, or message me uh, in next video we will have design or construction or you can say derivation of design of this lip spring so here this particular session i have took a reference of the machine design by rs kurmi and if you if you want to have different resources you can have a uh, design machine element by vivi bandari and auto design by rb gupta i hope you understand each and every point very well i'm stopping here thank you thank you so much